All right, here's another video where we're dealing with proportions. Unlike the previous video, this time we're going to be talking about confidence interval in the notion of proportions. So to be able to understand confidence intervals with proportions, you really need to be solid on two different things. You really need to understand confidence intervals when we first saw them, where they're confidence intervals for mu, the population average. Then you also need to understand this idea of proportions in the first place. So as a reminder, this idea of proportions in the first place is now we're dealing with data that is not numeric anymore. So terms like sample mean or population mean or standard deviation don't even make sense anymore. Right? We don't have numeric data, so we can't talk about those ideas. Our data is a bunch of yeses and a bunch of noes. So when we summarize this data, rather than quoting things like, I don't know, maybe a sample average, we would quote something like a sample proportion, the proportion of the people who answer yes to whatever the question is that I ask them. So that's the idea with proportions. The idea with confidence intervals, well, when there are confidence intervals for mu, it was a very realistic scenario. The idea was you don't know the population average mu, which makes sense. Generally, you don't know population parameters, but you do know the sample average x bar. Sure, I could find that. I could randomly select some number of people and collect sample data and calculate a sample average, no problem. And when you know the sample average, you can learn, you can use what you learned with sampling distributions of sample averages to make predictions about mu. If you know X bar, you can make guesses about mu. Mu tends to be pretty close to X bar and we can talk about how close. We said stuff like, because my sample average was 35, I'm 95% sure that my population average is between, I don't know, 34 and 36, something to that effect. The goal of 4.2, was finding bounds for your population average. What we're gonna talk about in this video will be very similar to that, except it won't be confidence intervals for mu, because now we're in 4.5, we're dealing with proportions. It's gonna be a confidence interval, maybe I'll be shorthand, confidence interval for P. Why P? Because P is the population proportion, it's the 4.5 version of the thing that we used to call mu. It's the thing that's analogous to mu, the population average, except now it's a population proportion. And how are we going to do that? How are we going to make a confidence interval for P? Well, the way we made them for mu, the way we made a confidence interval for a population average was based on the sample average. So it makes a lot of sense that here we're going to make our inference about the population proportion based on the sample proportion. We'll be given the sample proportion. And I know some of these symbols are still a little new to you. But it'd be nice if you got to the point where you could immediately recognize that that's p hat, that in your head p hat and x bar are tied together. This is the 4.5 version of the thing that we used to call this. We'll be asked about the population proportion. And again, symbols get comfortable with the population proportion being the letter p. And in your head, maybe tie together this p and this mu. So that's big picture what we're doing. Let's actually get into an example and do one together. Um, so I need a 4.5 confidence interval example. So I need some sort of situation where I'm interested in something that would be a yes or no question. So um, I don't know, do you have a dog? Do, uh, maybe I'm interested in the proportion of all New Yorkers that have a dog. Right, but there's a lot of New Yorkers, so I can't go asking all of the New Yorkers that they have a dog. And by the way, I'm not interested in how many dogs. I don't want to know, oh, I have two, I have one, I have zero, I have three. I don't want that. I want it to be all yeses and nos. Um, but I can't ask everybody because there's too many. So I maybe randomly select, I don't know, let's say 500 this time. 500 New Yorkers. and find that um, probably not too many in New York, uh, doesn't matter. Find that 16% have a dog. So given in that first sentence is my sample size and my sample proportion. And then what I might be asked to do is create a whatever, 90%, pick whatever confidence level you want, whatever's given, create a 90% confidence interval for P, the proportion of all New Yorkers who have a dog. 
It's probably relatively close to 16% because I looked at 500 New Yorkers, but maybe in my sample, just by dumb luck, there are a couple extra people more than I'd expect to have a dog. Maybe really 15% of the population has a dog. And in my sample, I got 16% because this is just a sample proportion. So what we're supposed to do is based on this data we got from our sample, create, kind of make an estimate and inference about the population parameter. And when we did these back in 4.2, I always made it at least a three-step process and sometimes a four-step process, right? Maybe you recall that the first step was always shape center spread. And the reason I asked you to do that was because in the second step, you always drew a picture. And then in the third step, you kind of interpreted that picture. You told me what it mean. You state your conclusion. And then sometimes there was a fourth step. And that fourth step was now you're not happy. You want to change your margin of error. Uh, if you want this margin of error, what should your sample size be? There was that ugly formula. Determine n for a given margin of error those four steps are exactly what we're going to do here sometimes you'll just do the first three but i want to show you how to do the fourth step just so if that pops up you can do that as well and i'm going to try to make it as similar as possible to what you did in 4.2 because in my mind i want to take advantage of all the stuff you learned in 4.2 when we did confidence intervals for the population mean and kind of leverage that in this chapter where we do confidence intervals for the population proportion. Anyways, let's do the problem, work through it. I randomly select 500 New Yorkers. It'd be nice if you were to the point where you could imagine, immediately recognize what symbol that 500 is. It's our sample size, so it's a 500. And find that 16% of them, so this is the proportion of the sample. So this is my sample proportion, P hat is the symbol that we have for that, is 16%, 0.16. And what you're asked to do is create a 90% confidence interval for the proportion of all New Yorkers who have a dog. So this is your level of confidence. And if your level of confidence is 90%, that also tells you that alpha is 10% because alpha is always one minus your level of confidence. One more comment here. When we did this previously, I warned you that there were kind of two different ways the question could be asked. Sometimes the sample proportion was given to you is 35%. And sometimes the number of people in the sample with the given criteria was given to you. The number of successes is what a lot of books call this, right? Sometimes I said 35% of people have blue eyes. And sometimes I said 50 out of the 200 people have blue eyes. And we had to, oh, if you give me the question this way, if you tell me 50 out of the 200 people, we had to be able to convert that into 25%. 65 of the 200 people, we had to be able to convert that into 32.5%. Last time, we had an issue that sometimes you're really happy if they gave you the sample proportion right off the bat here. And sometimes they told you the number in the sample that have the given criteria and you had extra work to do. In this section, turns out you have to be able to go in both directions. So I want to give you a little uh, more concrete way of going back and forth between those two notions. And it's this formula. It's that P hat is equal to X over n and all that this you another formula you kidding me like i've already memorized so much stuff this isn't as bad as it seems you've already used this formula right here all right to figure out this 25 percent you took this 50 and divided it by this 200 this is p hat this is x this is n right, we've used this formula before i just want to make it a little bit more concrete now this time we just talked about it intuitively here i want an actual formula and i'll explain why in a minute so when you read this problem, in this case, they gave me P hat, but maybe you can imagine another situation where I said I randomly select 500 New Yorkers and find that, let's say, um, 80 of them have a dog. Right? If I had given you the information this way and you wanted to know what P hat was, you would have had to take 80 and divide it by 500. And if you took 80 and divided it by 500, you would find that it was 0 0.16. What I'm saying is the number of successes, the number that have a dog, is going to get its own letter now. It's the letter X. So this is still P hat, and X, which sometimes will be given to you and sometimes will not be given to you, is the letter X. So there's three different notions, P hat, X, and N, and they're all kind of tied together with this formula here. Why? Why am I making such a big deal about this? Like it, we, it served us fine in the last problem. You didn't give me any other 
extra formulas and I understood well enough how to get this 25%. Well, it turns out that in confidence intervals, you have to be able to go in both directions. Last time, if you were given X, if you were told 80 of them have a dog, you had to find P hat. This time you have to be able to go in both directions. If you're given X, you got to find P hat. If you're given P hat, you have to find X. So if I told you 80 of them have a dog, you'd be like, all right, 80 divided by 500 equals 0.16. And this is my value for P hat. So if the blue stuff were here, that's the work that you do. But what about the green stuff? In this problem, it told you that 16% have a dog. It'll turn out that you need to know what X is. Well, if P hat equals X over N, if you're algebraically inclined, you can multiply both sides of this equation by N and get that X is always just equal to N times P hat. So if I were not given X, if I didn't tell you 80 of them had a dog, if I just said 16% have a dog, you could figure out how many 16% is by saying 16% of 500, so 500 times 16% and getting 80 is your answer. So the point is, rather they, whether they give you X or P hat, you can always find the other one, either by using, by using one of these two formulas, which are really just the same formula written in different ways. And I know that seems like a lot, and you're like, I don't understand why you're making me do all this. I'm setting the table. If you have this stuff down, you have everything that you need. Let me show you how. So we have all the information given in green in this problem, right? 500 New Yorkers, 16% have a dog, 90% confidence interval. And then you know, you look ahead and you're like, I'm gonna need to know what X is and it wasn't given to me in this problem. So you calculate that X is 80, which was the number that have a dog here. And then you can go through and answer all the questions. First shape, probably won't surprise you that the shape's gonna end up being approximately normal or just normal's fine, it doesn't matter. And it probably won't surprise you that I'm going to ask you for why. Why is it approximately normal? Well, in the previous section, see if I can find it. We had this criteria, right? We got normality with proportions because you memorized this formula right here. And you weren't thrilled to memorize it, but maybe you did it so that you can get the extra point in like a 20-point question or something. This was our formula for normality when we were in, in the previous video. We can't use the same formula. That's the bad news. The reason we can't use the same formula is because when you have confidence intervals, you don't know what P is equal to. P is the population proportion. We don't know that. We're asked about that. But that we do have P hat. And I think the best case scenario for you would be if this criteria for confidence intervals was the exact same except you put little hats on the P's. And it is. It's kind of nice. So you don't really have to memorize a new formula. It's just the confidence interval for version of the formula that you already memorized. The shape's approximately normal because N times P hat times one minus P hat is greater than or equal to 10. And guess what? If you write N times P times one minus P is greater than or equal to 10, I don't really care. I mean, I'll maybe lose a half point on a 20 point question if I'm in a bad mood. Maybe I don't even care at all. It's just the point of technically it has to be P hat because P hat is the thing that you know in this problem it's 16% it's not P. Anyways, I've already spent too much time on that. Center. The center of the confidence interval when we dealt with confidence intervals last time was X bar. Right, that was always the center. We called it a point estimate. The thing that's kind of like X bar is P hat. Best case scenario, your new center would be called a point estimate and the symbol that we would use for it would be P hat. And that's exactly the case. P hat is my center and that's equal to 0.16. Note that if I only told you 80 of them have a dog, I didn't tell you that was 16%. You'd have to take 80 and divide it by 500 to get that 16% so that you'd know what to write for center here. Spread. We used to have a formula for spread. I know this is getting annoying me going back over and over again. I'll do this one more time. Uh, the formula for spread, there was a fancy symbol for it, and it was the square root of P times 1 minus P divided by N. Best case scenario? My best case scenario would be identical to this because I already memorized this from the last video, except instead of P's, it couldn't possibly be P's. It would be P hats. It is. All right, more or less, everything stays the same in this video and in the last, except you change all the P's into P hats. The center's not P, it's P hat. The spread's not the square root of P times one minus P over N. It's the square root of P hat times one minus P hat over N. And if you feel like calculating that, you can if you wanna just leave it as 0.16 times 0.84, that's one minus 0.16, divided by N, which was 500 in this case, we're good. And note, I didn't even plug in the numbers up here. I think I told you that you don't even have to. I trust that you could take 500, multiply by 0.16, multiply by 0.84, and get what the answer is equal to. Shape, center, spread. Picture, first you're gonna draw something that's approximately normal, because you just said above that your shape is approximately normal. 
And then for your center, you're going to put in 0.16. That's called a point estimate. And then what you have to do are find the two bounds that separates the middle 90% from the outside 10%. Why 90%? Because it's said in the problem that I want a 90% confidence interval. How do I find these two numbers? Well, you could find them with the inverse norm function in your calculator. That's what we saw last time we dealt with confidence intervals, but I recommended that you don't. I told you don't do that because your calculator has a built-in function that does it for you. It still does. If you go over to tests here, last time we did confidence intervals, you grabbed this Z interval guy. Don't do that. The reason you don't want to do that is because your calculator recognizes that these proportion questions are common enough that it builds a special function just for this purpose. It's one prop Z interval, not Z interval, but one prop Z interval, one prop, prop standing for proportions. Let's tell you that we're dealing with proportions here. One prop Z interval is the calculator function you'll always use in this case. And if you select one prop Z interval, it won't ask you for a whole lot of stuff because in these questions, not a whole lot of information is given to you. All it asks for is three things, X, N, and the confidence level. X, careful, this is the number of people that own a dog. Put in 0.16 here, and it won't give you a wrong answer. It'll give you no answer at all. It'll give you an error. Because X is not the proportion that own a dog. X is the number that own a dog. So if I just tell you that X is 80, then you have X. If I tell you that 16% of the 500 own a dog, you have to calculate X and maybe calculate that X is 80 here. X is 80, be careful there. N is 500. And my level of confidence in this one was 90%. I go down and hit calculate. And what it'll do is it spit out the bounds of my interval. It gives me exactly what I want. Uh, 0 0.13303, sure. And 0 0.18697. That's a great picture right there. That's everything that you need for your picture. And then finally, there's a third step here where we state our conclusion. The key thing I want you to get out of the conclusion is that it's the population proportion in this case that we don't know. I don't know my population proportion, but I'm pretty sure, 90% sure, that it's somewhere in between here and here. I am 90% certain or confident or sure or whatever that P or that the population proportion, I guess what I would like you to do is state it in the context of the problem so that the proportion of all New Yorkers who own a dog is between these two numbers. I like to state them as percentages. I think it's easier for the reader to understand. So 13.303% and 18.697%. That's my conclusion. Pretty similar to the conclusions that we wrote last time we saw these problems. Then sometimes there's a step four, but the step four kind of stands on its own. So what I wanna do is I wanna save that for a different video. So in the next video, I'll show you how to do this. Before I end this video, I just want to make really clear that these problems aren't that bad, but there are a couple little tricks in there that you have to be careful of. And the big trick, the one that gets most students, is sometimes you're given X and sometimes you're given P hat. Make sure if you're given X, you can calculate P hat like we did in blue here, and you'll need that for shape, center, and spread. And make sure that if you're given P hat like we were in this problem, you can calculate X because you'll need that for your calculator function. You needed to know what X was in order to get these answers here, these values out of your calculator. But if you can be solid with the difference between X and P hat, that's like most of this problem, right? You can still lose a point or two if you don't have all these memorized. Note that this doesn't go into your calculator anywhere to get your answer, but I do want you to write it to give the con some context to this picture. But if you got this a little bit wrong, maybe you'd lose a little bit of credit, but you could still get 90% on these problems. Similarly down here, if your conclusion isn't perfect, you can lose a little bit of credit and still get most of the points. So make sure you can at least go through the big picture stuff and get most of the points and then focus on getting the last little bit. Make sure your conclusion is really talking about the population proportion. Make sure that you have the formulas for shape center spread. So that's steps one, two, and three for confidence intervals. I'll come back in another video and show you step four.